Today I am knocking down a wall and I'm going to do my best to explain my process for taking a wall down safely-ish, hopefully. Hi folks, welcome back. As you're probably aware if you've already seen the plans of what we're doing to this property for this renovation, we need to take this wall out. So this is the current bathroom. The current bathroom's far too small. So we're going to take this wall out and basically build a new wall about a metre in that direction. Now this is a solid wall. So whenever you're knocking down a solid wall, you've got to do your homework and make sure that it's not a load bearing wall, make sure it's not structural. So I'm going to take you through my thought process behind all of this, what I would normally check, and hopefully it'll not cause any problems. Now, as per usual, I'm just showing you my approach to doing a job that I need to do for myself and I thought I'd share it with you. I am not saying this is the best way of doing it. The best way of doing this is that you get a structural engineer involved and they do all the calculations and everything, but I'm fairly confident this is just a partition wall. It's not supporting anything, but I am gonna step you through how I'm working that out. So obvious things first of all, I've taken all of the electrics out of this wall so we know the wall should be completely safe unless there's any extra electrics hidden under the plaster but there shouldn't be. I've also taken out the electrics on the other side of the wall as well so obviously check both sides of the wall. Because we're doing a renovation, yeah don't even talk about that joist, we'll talk about that at a later date or I might have already talked about it. But there's various holes in the floor and I don't want the rubble from knocking this wall down falling through the downstairs ceiling. So I've just covered up the holes over there with a few boards, again just to stop any kind of bits of rubbish falling through and damaging the ceiling below. And other than that I've had a look at the structure of the wall. We can see at the bottom here it's built on top of a joist uh, there. It is literally right on top of that joist. It appears to be on top of the floorboards on top of the joists but that'll become a bit more obvious once I take the skirting board off. I've also had a look up in the loft and I can't see anything obvious resting on this wall. What would often happen, what was often the case, and it'll, again this will become more obvious over time, is that they would just do all of the internal walls with like cinder block and uh, then the chippies would do the roof and, and whatnot. But yeah, all of the internal walls in this particular property are solid, so they're not necessarily all supporting walls, but some of them definitely are. I would imagine the cinder block ones aren't, but yeah, we're still gonna do our homework. And the next thing I'm gonna check I want to be absolutely certain that there's nothing resting on top of this wall. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a few holes in the ceiling and I'm going to poke some wires up so that I can see where those holes are on the loft side and then I'll join you again from the loft. So here's the two front holes that are screwed. What? Oh, try not to fall off my ladder. So there's one of the cables coming through just there. And the other one is just there. So this joist is resting directly on top of that wall by the looks of it. But it is just a ceiling joist. We'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. And it's exactly the same at that end as well. We've got one of the wires is on that side of the joist and one of the wires is on that side. So this joist is definitely sitting on top of that wall. But here is why I still think it's not a supporting wall. By the looks of it, the lats are running under this joist. So for the lats to be running under this joist, the lats would have had to have been put on before the wall was built because you wouldn't have been able to get in to nail the lats onto the bottom of this choice. It's hard to tell. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna knock out a couple of blocks in the wall and just confirm that the lats are definitely running underneath this joist. That still doesn't 100% guarantee that this isn't supporting, but looking across the loft, there's plenty of other joists of this size that have nothing underneath them. And we're not in a particularly 
critical part of the loft, so I think it's fine. One other thing worth noting here, obviously it's, it's this wall that we're taking out, and this doorway has probably got some sort of lintel over the top of it, because again, it's solid everywhere, everywhere is solid, that's solid, that's, hmm, pretty sure that's solid, <laughs> we shall see. But either way, there's, a, there's probably a lintel going over there and a, a lintel going over here. So how is that lintel supported? What we might end up having to do is just leave a small section of the wall or put some sort of structural support down that edge just to support those lintels, if that makes sense, because those lintels obviously can't just be hanging in midair. We're not really gonna know until we start taking a little bit of this wall down. But uh, aye, I'm gonna take a couple of blocks out and we'll see what the lats are doing. Sure enough, I'm not sure if you can see this, but you can see the lats run all the way over the top of this wall. And to me, that means the entire house was built, roof was on, lats were put in, and then this wall was put in. So I don't see how you could possibly have done all of that if this was a structural wall, because this wall would have had to have been built first and the lats would run up to the edge of this wall. But for this to have been put in after the lats, and you can see there's nail holes there. So this was definitely put in after the ceiling was done. That means the ceiling must be self-supporting. I am gonna double check with a structural engineer friend of mine just to uh, be on the safe side. One interesting thing as well, I mean, this is like cinder block type stuff, but uh, it's a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. And I also, I'm struggling to find a, you can see like an edge of a block there but I can't find, is that the mortar? How big are these blocks? That's huge. That would be like a normal kind of size block there, but it looks like it goes all the way to that edge. I'm not entirely sure anyway. Either way, this is gonna be quite a big job taking this wall out. And as I say, I am gonna double check with the structural engineer that this is gonna be safe to take out, but I think it's absolutely fine. This is it from the bedroom side, just so you can see. I'm not sure if you can see there, but you can see where the lats are coming in over the top of the wall. So the wall's definitely been put in after the lats. So theoretically, this wall isn't doing anything. But what you can see over here, can you see this little crack down that edge? I would suspect the lintel probably comes up to like here. So what I'm tempted to do is leave this section of wall just down that edge. It doesn't really cause any problems leaving that and it's gonna leave a nice support for the lintels over the top of that door. I mean, it's not supporting very much. It's only a little bit of block work there and a little bit of block work over the other door. So I don't think it's gonna cause any kind of problems or anything like that. As I say, I am gonna double check with a structural engineer, but uh, once I've done that, we shall crack on and take the wall down. Right, quick update, we're uh, a couple of days on now and I've smashed a little bit more of this wall away and I've had a chat with a couple of structural engineers and they both concur with my thinking that if the lats were put in before the wall was built, then this wall can't be structural because the whole 
roof system must have been self-supporting before this wall was built. But what I am going to do, just kind of belt and braces and the structural engineers agreed on this point as well. I've smashed a bit of this away so we can see what's going on lintel wise and you can kind of vaguely see it's really weird this, this wall because it's really hard to see where the mortar joints are. I think we've got like a joint down here and down here but some of it looks like the whole wall is, is like cast in place. I'm sure that's not the case but I'm just struggling to find the mortar joints but it does look like we've got a big kind of lintel going across the top there but it's only cinder block it's only soft but it looks like we've got a definite kind of end there we've got this crack underneath and a crack going up the top there which would tend to indicate that that is a supporting bit so as I mentioned earlier I think what I am going to do is leave this last little section of wall in here I don't even know if this is doing anything that lintel might just be supported on the door frame but to be on the safe side, belt and braces, it makes no difference to the design anyway. I'm going to do a neat cut all the way down here and I'm going to leave this section of uh, wall in just uh, below the lintel and I'll do the same on the other side. Again, over on the bathroom side, I've taken all the tiles off, I've taken the skirtings and architraves off and Lord only knows what's going on over here. I might take this off to see if that's a lintel or just block work across the top. Again, you know, it could just be the door frames that are supporting this because that's not, it's not a proper lintel, but I will do a neat cut all the way down here and we'll leave that little section of wall in. That is us all done. <coughs> I'll be honest, it took longer to do the cleanup than it did to knock the wall out. Not the easiest of jobs. Luckily it's only cinder block and it wasn't like solid brick or concrete or something. But I'll show you around what I've done. Oh, it's a nice big echoey room this now. So you can see the floor was just built directly on top of the floorboards, but it did have the joist underneath it, so yeah. I suppose uh, small mercies and all that. By the way, there's no solid wall underneath this. I forgot to mention earlier that obviously check if you've got a, a solid wall upstairs and a solid wall downstairs and they sit directly on top of each other, then that's more cause for concern. 
but because underneath this is basically nothing, it's just ceiling un underneath here, it was another good kind of indication that this wasn't a load-bearing wall, but as I say, if in doubt, get a structural engineer involved and get them to uh, check things over properly. Again, confirming everything that I was saying before, you can see the lats were obviously put in before the wall was built because we've got the lats going all the way across the top of that wall. So there's no possible way they could have put those in after the wall was built, which as I say, is a fairly good indicator that it's not a load bearing wall. Briefly mentioned earlier, I am gonna keep this kind of pillar. I don't know, I might trim it back a little bit more, but it's purely to support this lintel in inverted commas. It's not a proper lintel really. I'm not 100% convinced that it's doing anything, but as I say, it's no great shakes. It's not causing a problem and we can incorporate this into the design of the room that's going to be joining onto here. So there'll be a wall will come out kind of at the bottom there and then it'll go all the way along and it makes the bathroom a bit bigger and uh, it encroaches onto the master bedroom, but the master bedroom is going to be plenty big enough. So that's not a problem. Completely irrelevant to that job, but I did do a little bit of um, cleaning up of the window area because there's going to be new windows going in. So I took the old sill out. I do need to sort this brickwork out here before we put a new sill in, but that's another job for another day. Quite impressed that they've actually got some um, cavity, like a very, very old cavity tray of some description, just like a socking felt type stuff. But uh, yeah, I think that's probably to stop any moisture getting down into the cavity from the windowsill area, I guess. I'm not 100%. As I say, a nice big room now. It's a shame I'm going to have to partition that off because, uh, yeah, this would make a great master bedroom. But, as I say, we're extending out onto this side anyway, so this is going to become quite a big room in its own right. Oh, and in case you're wondering how long this took, it took about half a day to pull the wall down and it took a good half a day to clear up all the rubbish. You wouldn't believe how much rubbish comes from just a single partition wall. One thing I would do if I was doing this again is I would hire a rubbish chute of some description because I must have taken 60 or 70 buckets of rubble downstairs and uh, yeah that was backbreaking but we're done. We'll leave it at that for today. I still need to take down the ceiling in the corner there because I'm going to be insulating under that ceiling. That's another job for another day. Probably do that tomorrow to be honest but that's enough for one day, I think. If you've got any questions, pop them down in the comments below. As I say, don't attempt a job like this if you don't know what you're doing. Your best bet is to get a structural engineer involved and get them to double check everything before you start randomly removing walls. Don't forget, you can watch this entire 1920s house renovation series. There's a link to the playlist down in the description below from square one, from literally kind of picking up the keys through to where we are now and you can follow this whole renovation project as we go along. So don't forget to hit subscribe. Take care folks, I shall see you next time. Tatty bye!